Welcome to Pharmacy Prep. As massive vaccination process underway across the world, so there are potential questions likely can come in uh, board exams, uh, such as pharmacy board exams, nursing board exams, medical USMLE board exams, or any medical board exams. So here, today's video will address some of the questions that are potentially can expect from um, board exams. So the, here, first one is about what's actual ingredients in COVID vaccine. So uh, today's topics would be discussing on uh, both the COVID vaccine active ingredients and also the inactive ingredients. And then followed by this, uh, there are questions like, will I get COVID-19 uh, infection from the vaccine? So. Uh, this video will address that point as well. And then additionally, there are questions such as uh, among the inactive ingredients, uh, are there any preservatives in the vaccines? Especially concern about the uh, mercury preservatives uh, because the mercury preservatives uh, such as thimerosal, which is containing mercury uh, atom in it. So like I uh, had in the past some uh, association to some of the side effects of the vaccines. So would that uh, contain any type of those uh, in this currently uh, COVID vaccines that are um, popular vaccines? And additionally, this video also address the questions like, are there any meat derivatives uh, in the COVID vaccines? And, um, and in gelatin products, because gelatin products uh, are generally obtained from uh, collagen. Collagen is from the animals, products or pork gelatins. So there are some restrictions on some of them to take those gelatin products. So therefore, uh, general public can be asking questions like, are there anything present in it? So we'll discuss those. And then also, are there any egg derivatives in COVID vaccines? because uh, there are some patients could be allergic to the eggs. So therefore we will discuss, is there any egg derivatives in this one? And finally, at the end of the video today, I'll be ex discussing about my personal experience on COVID vaccine uh, and also what are the common side effects reported in the references from the COVID vaccine. So let's begin with the what exactly uh, present in uh, COVID vaccine. So before I tell you what exactly present in the COVID vaccine, uh, it is important to discuss uh, very specific product related information because um, each vaccine can have a slightly different active and inactive ingredients. So therefore today's video is mainly focusing on these three major most popular vaccines currently uh, in the progress uh, in for the COVID prevention. So one is the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine and Moderna vaccine and also AstraZeneca vaccine. So this video is mainly focusing on these three. However, each slide will be specific for one specific uh, vaccine. So therefore, each ingredients, active and also inactive ingredients present in this one uh, we'll be discussing for each specific vaccine. So, so let's begin with, um, so first uh, about the two vaccines, which is a Moderna vaccine and um, Pfizer vaccine. So here are the labels presented on the each slide, uh, what that vaccine is related vaccine um, for information. So here, um, let's, begin with some information about the COVID virus itself. So imagine this is the dissection, uh, a dissection of those COVID viruses. So here are the COVID viruses. And then it is, if you dissect, that's what you will find in the COVID virus. So uh, there is a genetic material uh, present here. That is the uh, RNA type of virus. So this genetic material, surrounded by protein coat. And then on top of that, there is a membrane, lipid membrane, 
and on this lipid membrane there is attached spikes these are the called spikes or these are spike proteins and these spike proteins uh, basically um, the genetic sequence of this spike protein or you can say uh, it is a blueprint of the spike protein mrna has been utilized for making these two vaccines so those mrna also known as messenger rna and this messenger rna um, genetic codes has been utilized and then in the lab those based on those genetic code messenger rna has been synthesized and this synthesized messenger rna is used as an active ingredient in especially the two vaccines i'm referring here one is a moderna vaccine and also pfizer vaccine so what that means is basically um if we have a question like will i get covid infection from covid vaccine right what do you think will you get an infection from this one from vaccine absolutely no not possible the reason why because the genetic code that is utilized here only for spike protein not for entire vaccine so therefore by utilizing this genetic code of the spike protein you cannot form any uh, entire virus so that means uh, this vaccines will not cause covid infection that simple answer so because only a small fragment of the genetic code and it will be utilized and therefore it reduce the messenger RNA. However, actual vaccine does not contain any viruses. So therefore, it does not cause any kind of um, COVID infection due to the um, vaccine. So next here, I like to go over uh, some details on what exactly the components are present in active ingredient, right? So this is the um, messenger RNA that is utilized in COVID vaccines, especially referring to Moderna vaccine and Pfizer vaccines. And in this here, uh, this is the cap. Uh, so here there are two ends. One is five prime and the three prime ends of the nucleotide. Basically the mRNA is a nucleotide sequence. And in the nucleotide sequence, the cap, uh, the cap is basically attached here for the mRNA sequence, just to prevent from uh, destroying the mRNA uh, from the innate immunity. Because if you insert the mRNA into the cells or body, eventually there is a body's, our own immune first responder immune system that is called innate immunity. And those innate immunity can destroy those uh, the mRNA. So to prevent from those innate immunity destruction, the cap is introduced on this um, sequence of this mRNA. And then here there are five uh, prime untranslated regions, and then there are three prime untranslated regions. So these two of them are introduced between the mRNA sequence. And their purpose of the five prime untranslated region is again to regulate protein translation. Basically, once you introduce the mRNA, the next step is this mRNA do translation. That means they do produce uh, T RNAs or trans transfer RNAs. So that process is uh, regulated by these five prime untranslated regions. And the most important component of this entire active ingredient is uh, this COVID spike protein. Like I was mentioning in the previous slide, those COVID spike protein mRNA sequence. This mRNA sequence is what specifically obtained uh, from the genetic codes of the actual COVID uh, virus. However, there is no actual virus in it but just a genetic blueprint sequence utilized here. And that's the main uh, secret of entire active ingredients present here in this one. That's a hidden gem or 
multi-billion dollar points here. That's information. So um, treasure, I can say the secret, a treasure of a vaccine, especially for Moderna and Pfizer vaccines. And then um, here uh, at the end, the uh, polyadenine uh, trail, which is basically attached here, adenines, amino acids on the three prime region, and that provides stability to the active uh, ingredient of this vaccine. So this is the main uh, part of the active ingredients. However, uh, you cannot just simply take this active ingredient and insert into the human cell because that active ingredient will not will stay stable. So that's the reason why uh, these vaccines consist of inactive ingredient as well. So the inactive ingredients are important part of this one. So basically these inactive ingredients, uh, what are the important part of the in inactive ingredients? And maybe if you're a pharmacist or pharmaceutics researcher, I'm sure that may be very exciting for you to know how uh, much research of the pharmaceutics have been done in the past three decades to produce these vaccines. Now that has shown amazing results of having those manufacturing those vaccines. So in this case, uh, in the inactive ingredients mean they do not have any medical medicinal benefit. Uh, then why did they use it, this one inactive ingredients? Well, this is just to maintain the active ingredient stability in body that has been added to this one. So this inactive ingredients also known as excipients. You often hear if you're a pharmaceutics, if you have studied the pharmaceutics, I'm sure you have heard that common word excipient. So basically these are excipients. So among the excipient, the important component is cationic lipids. In these cationic lipids, uh, there are a quaternary salts of amines, and those quaternary positive ion charge, cation, right? Those are cations. So this cationic charge uh, binds with the phosphate anions of the nucleotides of the mRNA. So there are phosphates having anions, and those phosphate ions and the cations of the lipid bind together, and they form the beautiful a particle, a tiny, tiny lipid particle, which is called lipid nanoparticles, right? Those are well known for lipid nanoparticles. And basically now these lipid nanoparticles, uh, which is consist of cationic lipids, and then there are neutral lipids as well. There are, especially amongst uh, neutral lipids, there are important ones, which is polyethylene glycol. A lot of time, in short, that is called PEG. And this polyethylene glycol, uh, which plays a very important role in keeping this on uh, lipid nanoparticles in the stable condition and preventing from uh, attaching to those other, uh, other proteins in the cell or in the human body. So uh, basically this component, especially polyethylene glycon, also I'm mentioning here, important point, because uh, polyethylene glycol has been utilized in various medications in the past. A lot of medications have polyethylene glycol as an excipient. However, in the vaccine, it has never been utilized. However, this is the first time the polyethylene glycol has been used in the vaccine. So there are people who have a history of uh, having um, allergy or especially the serious and rare allergy that is called anaphylactic reaction or anaphylaxis. Those who have a history of polyethylene glycol allergy, then it is very important that before taking these vaccines, they should let healthcare professional know that they had a, uh, they had a history of those allergies. So that way it can be, uh, it can have a rare chance of having serious allergy with it. So therefore, if you're not aware, then you have nothing about to tell. However, if you had in the history of polyethylene glycol allergies, you should let them know your healthcare professional before you're taking especially these two vaccines. 
Well, now after combining this one, obviously other important active, uh, inactive or excipient is buffers because buffers and salts are added to this preparation to produce the physiological pH and also the, uh, to create the physiological body's environment. So then uh, buffers are added to this one. And all this combination will produce a beautiful looking uh, lipid nanoparticles. And in this lipid nanoparticles are uh, studded or attached with the, uh, the M messenger RNAs. And now these lipid particles are very tiny particles and those are used in uh, injection to uh, introduce into the human body as a vaccine. So let's look at what exactly more details on uh, what are these excipients and each uh, excipient functions and how does it help to maintain these um, vaccines into the stable condition until this vaccine is uh, reaches to inside the cell because the vaccines have to reach inside the cell so in order to start uh, doing a translation and producing um, spike proteins. So the important component for these two vaccines, especially uh, Pfizer and Moderna vaccine, that is one thing, something exciting. This is the, uh, for them, was the lipid nanoparticles. And the main function of the lipid nanoparticles are to, uh, to surround the mRNA and protect from uh, this degradation of the mRNA. And also enable this um, mRNA to reach to inside the cell. So that's what it works like a carrier. Uh, just imagine that's a good example is a carrier. It just carries all the weight inside the cell. Like a car or truck, just a truck carries inside all the way into the cell and deliver those mRNA inside the cell. And then uh, to keep this, um, obviously, to maintain the natural body's physiologic pH, there are um, pH buffers are added, and there are normal salts like sodium chloride and potassium chloride salts are there. And also for those who are uh, in the pharmaceutics or pharmaceutical manufacturing, you are all well aware that water for injection Right, water for injection is the main component. Just the water for injection is used in manufacturing pharmaceutics, pharmaceuticals. So therefore, here water for injection also used. And interesting is uh, how about sugar, like right? sugar, which is sucrose, commonly used. Well, sucrose uh, works like a stabilizer. Stabilizer means it protects vaccine uh, when it is, especially, I'm, you have heard that, uh, especially Pfizer and also Moderna vaccines, they are stored at uh, extreme uh, minus temperatures or freezing temperatures. So in that freezing temperature, how that messenger RNA, which is part of this, uh, part of this um, vaccine, uh, how that is stabilized. Basically, sucrose protects vaccine from breaking down during the freezing and also tying temperatures. So that's the main purpose of the sugars uh, functions in vaccines. So next, let's see um, how this um, each, I will take the each vaccine uh, manufacturer uh, vaccine product, and then we'll discuss what are those uh, active and inactive uh, ingredients are present. Because again, as I mentioned, uh, what is present in each vaccine depends on specific product related. So therefore, always before um, your recommendation or before administering, always use the product monograph from the manufacturer or uh, there are uh, also there are emergency use authorization. Uh, FDA has uh, the um, uh, product monograph information that is provided by the manufacturer, one can use it. Or also the compendium of pharmaceutical specialty also has a product monograph. They are the specific information stores for all of them. However, whenever you're administering them or for a practical purpose, obviously you have to use reference. 
However, this information could be very effective for your exams preparation. So in this case, there are, let's look at the lipid nanoparticles, same as we discussed before. So they have a proprietary on uh, their own uh, uh, lipids, cationic lipids, and also uh, this is the polyethylene glycol that plays a very important role maintaining the stability of vaccine. And then also we discussed that salts and buffers, like as we discussed, that plays an important role to maintain uh, biologic pH. And then also water for injection and sucrose, which is the works like a stabilizer during cold temperatures. And for Pfizer also required diluent before administering them. And diluent that is used for Pfizer is uh, normal saline, which is also known as 0.9% of injection, sodium chloride injection, USP. USP here refers to United States pharmacopoeia. This is refers to, that is mean that's prepared uh, according to USP conditions. So next we will see uh, the questions like we discussed in the beginning that uh, is this uh, the questions like, are there any preservatives uh, in it? So simple answer is there is no preservatives, none. There is no preservatives have been used for Pfizer vaccine. And that's one of the reasons why you have to store this in the very cold temperatures. And uh, including there is no hemerosol, which is a containing mercury, which is known to have concern. And um, so therefore there's a none, none preservative. And the next question is about, are there any meat derivatives? Are there any extracts, meat extracts, or any traces of the meats in it? None, because there is no meat utilized in preparation or there is no meat product. So there is none meat product. So therefore, are there any egg derivatives? Or what if someone has allergy to the egg, can they take this vaccine? Well, uh, there is no egg derivatives and therefore uh, there is none uh, egg traces in this one. Likely you will not have any cross reactivity to egg. However, also there is another one often questions about gelatin because gelatin is generally obtained from collagen of the animal. So which is a uh, generally found in the animal skin. And a lot of time it is also obtained from the pork skin tissues. So therefore uh, this have no gelatin. So people who have a concern about uh, pork gelatin or any animal gelatin containing product, there are no gelatin in it. So this is what answers for all those questions we had in the beginning. However, this is a specific for Pfizer product. So next, uh, there is a Moderna. Moderna also have a very similar um, a ways of which is active ingredient is very similar. However, they have their own proprietary nucleotide for the messenger RNA. And they also utilize lipid nanoparticles and these lipid nanoparticles, uh, they have a very similar ingredients. However, they have a, their own proprietary PEG, or which is a polyethylene glycol. And there are some other lipids, uh, neutral lipids have a slight difference. Otherwise, uh, next we have a salt and buffers. They also utilize salts and buffers. In the salts and buffers, there is a, obviously, uh, this is maybe those who work in pharmaceuticals, uh, biotechnology, you're familiar with this one that is called TRIS buffer. Uh, TRIS buffer is uh, used here, TRIS. And um, also water for injection, which is a, used as a, um, in the preparation. And sugar, which is a sucrose, obviously used as a, as a protecting from breaking down of the mRNA during um, storage conditions. And then um, let's see as next, um, what about, uh, is there any uh, preservatives in Moderna vaccine? No, no preservatives that include no thimerosal, no mercury, and there's no meat products so or no meat derivatives and no egg or no egg traces and of course no gelatin products. So that's about the Moderna vaccine inactive ingredient or excipients.
So the next vaccine is slightly different, which is a Pfizer, uh, sorry, AstraZeneca vaccine. AstraZeneca vaccine is obviously, it has a different technology, which is also known as viral vector technology. Vector, maybe you, a vector word is very popular for this one. What does that mean, vector means? Basically, in this um, AstraZeneca, uh, utilizes the um, adenovirus, which is a harmless virus. It is created to be harmless. And this adenovirus is used as a carrier to the um, DNA genetic uh, blueprint of the uh, virus, COVID virus spike protein. So imagine this is the adenovirus. So there is a genetic blueprint here for uh, for the adena, uh, this for the COVID, vi um, uh, COVID virus spike protein. So instead of lipid nanoparticles, they are utilizing as a virus, which is a harmless virus. It has been created to not to cause infection or kill virus. And then obviously it does carries this one. Uh, the DNA spike protein genetic code. And then obviously that helps to enter this into the cell and nucleus. In the nucleus, this um, uh, genetic code uh, does transcription of mRNA. And then transcription mRNA eventually um, does translation and then make those spike proteins. So the spike proteins are generated after translation of those mRNAs. So that's a slightly different technology of viral vector. So we have a special video on viral vector um, vaccines. So we will discuss that in that one. However, so here uh, they are not using lipid nanoparticles. So therefore there is no PEG or polyethylene glycol. Instead, they have a different buffers, histidine, and there is a small amount of all ethanol. And then also the salts, just to maintain the physiologic pH and water for injection for manufacturing. And then there is a, for those who are familiar with the surfactants, polysorbate. The polysorbate is a very popular surfactant also known as non-ionic surfactant. So basically the purpose of non-ionic surfactant here is to prevent um, from sticking this vaccine to the vials, uh, the glass vials. So that was the main purpose of adding polysorbate as a surfactant uh, for this um, AstraZeneca vaccine. And also it utilizes the sucrose to maintain those uh, nucleotides uh, stability during storage conditions. So these are the content of the uh, AstraZeneca. So let's look at uh, what about uh, preservatives and meat and egg, etc. So here also for AstraZeneca did not utilize any preservatives, no mercury, no other preservatives are utilized. So therefore, and also there is no polyethylene glycol. So those who have allergy to polyethylene glycol need not to be concerned with this one because there is no pack utilized here. So otherwise there is a meat, there is no meat traces in this one. There is no egg traces. And obviously there is no gelatin traces as well. So that means there are no concern of those cross reactivity. So this is all about the, um, the active and inactive ingredients. So the next, I like to present to my personal experience uh, going through this first dose of the COVID vaccine. And my experience, uh, I like to share with this future uh, video on this one. So and then after that, I also like to discuss what are the general side effects of this vaccine and also um, what are the key important points. And at the end also I like to discuss about the uh, what is the status of these vaccine approval because when these vaccines have been approved by the FDA originally they are given emergency use authorization. So we'll discuss briefly what exactly emergency use authorization is. 
Next, as this video is getting quite a long, so therefore I have decided to have a separate video for COVID-19 vaccine side effects. Please um, have a look at those video for more details on the side effects. So here, finally, I thank you. And uh, hopefully this uh, video helps you in your exam preparation. And um, please like this and also say thumbs up. And also for more videos, please subscribe my channel. Thank you again.